I'm Adam Kazari, and I'm the Social Media and Content Editor at the Royal Academy of Arts. I've had previous jobs in the Museum of English Rural Life, which is probably most famous for its Twitter accounts, as well as Reading Museum, and I had a short hiatus at Tesla Motors as their Social Media Manager. The most successful project I've probably worked on has been this digital transformation project at the Museum of English Rural Life and Reading Museum, um, which is funded by Arts Council England where we did a lot of staff training and um, learned a lot of new things about digital marketing, which the most visible successful thing coming out of that was um, the Absolute Unit tweets and viral campaign that followed. And then the gradual building up of this account from a small rural museum in Reading in Southern England into almost this global phenomenon of strange tweets. We had to prove the real life successes of a tweet, otherwise colleagues would always just think that it's this kind of frivolous exercise that results in likes, but nothing that's useful to them. So we were very careful to make sure that we were tracking um, who was coming to the museum afterwards to see if it had an effect on visitor numbers, which it did. Um, we made sure to, to use the soft power of um, celebrities and just normal people saying, this is a great account. I want to come to Reading and come and visit the Museum of English Rural Life because of this tweet. Our curator of collections was keen himself to write a blog about um, the sheep and the history of animal genetics behind it, which is still the museum's most viewed blog ever, I think. So we could say to everyone, we've had more research interest. We've been asked to go to conferences, talk about the museum's work. We have more people come to the museum itself, which is important for our funders, the university and the Arts Council. Um, we have more money coming in. We actually had a successful crowdsourcing campaign to conserve the archive after the sheep went viral. So it was making sure we knew the priorities of the rest of the museum and we weren't just sat in our own little bubble saying we just want engagement and followers, but actually tying it to things which the rest of the museum wanted. I think the most important thing for other museums to learn, it's something I always say to people, is you don't have to do the same thing. That for us, it was very specific to the museum with the name we had, have, and kind of the perception of a small rural museum in England being strange on Twitter. There are a lot of things unique to that, and not everyone has to be funny and stupid and weird to have success. For us, it worked, but it's more figuring out what works for you. And that requires a base knowledge and skill of how to use social media tools, how to manipulate images, how to stay on top of trends but a lot of it is actually the softer skills of creative writing and having good relationships with colleagues and not working in a silo. For a small museum, there are some basic things to get a hold of. If you're very embedded in your community and you're not looking to get other visitors from far and wide, then maybe you should be putting all your effort into communicating with that community. And I think you'll find that in any small community, even at a town level, that community is almost always on Facebook and they're in Facebook groups. You need to be finding allies and just talking to people on those groups and telling them when things are happening. A well-functioning website, I think, is just essential for anyone, but it doesn't need to be too snazzy. Heritage organisations can't ignore digital and it's interesting because when we did our digital transformation project, we said, why are we doing this project? What problem are we trying to fix? And we looked at the graphs of use of the internet and use of social media and how people get their information. And we came into the problem statement of if we don't start using digital technologies effectively and get the skills to use them effectively, we will just become irrelevant. Because when people search for us, we won't be there. When people are looking for us on social media, we won't be there. And then people won't know to come and visit because they're not using traditional methods of finding out information and things to do. So at the core, it's almost like a survival thing. One other success at the Mall, which I was really proud of, is we managed to get basically the whole museum using Trello. And if you don't know Trello, it's a kind of project management tool because I've always hated the lack of communication between different departments. We knew that was one of our biggest issues because we'd done the digital skills and confidence survey among staff and everyone was saying we don't communicate enough. We have no idea what anyone else is doing because we only do email 
meetings and corridor meetings. We tested a few different tools out. We had a set of criteria. We landed on Trello. We did a big training program. We um, adapted it to the needs of every team and every individual and it now works and I think 85% of staff said that was the most useful thing that came out of our digital transformation project. One of the most effective things I've seen recently online is the Auschwitz Memorial's use of Twitter and the Auschwitz Memorial is in Auschwitz itself. It's set up to preserve the history of the Holocaust, the stories of the survivors and those who died and what we should all learn and remember from that horrible event. And I've had my eye on them for a while, but very recently they had this ambition to get a million followers on Twitter. And I think they just got it a week before the 75th anniversary of the Holocaust. But they didn't do it by accident. They have this very activist approach to Twitter, where instead of just doing the classic, we have these events, here are some anniversary dates, please go to our website. They use it as an activist tool for the organisation. So they're actively going out and calling, calling out people who are saying the Holocaust didn't happen. And they're saying, here's all the evidence for why you're wrong. One thing I'd really like the heritage sector to do more of is what every sector want, like should be doing more of, I think, which is we're always terrified to talk about our mistakes and what we're learning and what we're doing. And actually, if people who have already tried all these digital things had written about them, and then talked about them on social media, then so many small organizations could have benefited because they could have seen what works and what doesn't, what's required, the effort that goes into it. And it would stop all of us reinventing the wheel every second week. So my plea would be for heritage organizations to encourage their staff to blog and talk about what they're doing because I make a million mistakes and I hope I'm honest enough to write about it.